you want some watermelon or zucchinis, I think there's even a couple of bits of bread and rolls. They're all at the back there, so please uh, help yourself. Um, we always score a few extra bits and pieces as we pick up food hampers and things like that. It's got a couple of watermelons and mm. lots of zucchini, so please take them home because I don't want them. <laughs> and you can enjoy them, so that's all very good. Thank you, uh, Kim and Linda. Thank you for all the extra work, uh, putting videos together and putting it in the software that makes our service run and all those extra bits and pieces. We just get to come in, sit there and sing away and go, oh, that's nice. Yeah, but let us remember the work that it takes to actually put on the service and thank you for everyone who sings and helps and all those bits and pieces, which is very good. So welcome. If you've been uh, travelling with us, we're looking at the uh, book of Job and the person of Job and what God might want to say to us from the pages of Job. And so this morning's message is called, Why Me God? Great to see people uh, meeting for Bible study Monday mornings and Tuesday nights. It's great to have you do that over this uh, series that we're doing, Churchwide Focus on, on Job. So why do bad things happen? I'd love to have a nice, easy answer. The story of Job is full of highs and lows. Suffering, pain, unhelpful friends. Anyone ever had an unhelpful friend? <laughs> Confession is good for the soul. But through it all, Job perseveres. And through it all, Job stays faithful and secure. Maybe you agree with Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 2 that says, Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Maybe that's you, but I hope not. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you that we can just take a few moments to open your word this morning. To be encouraged from the pages of the book of Job. Lord, show us what we need to hear. Lord, help us along those roads of life. Lord, at times we struggle. At times we're in pain. At times we are suffering. At times we're watching loved ones suffer. And Lord, we wonder why. But God, you are there. You come and sit with us. You come and be our comfort and our hope. And may we be a good friend to those around us. And have a word of hope and encouragement. Because of our faith in Jesus. For you are our God. You are our creator. You are our hope and our salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning we're going to have a little look at Job chapter 9 and a bit of Job chapter 27. So that's sort of where we're heading. Job talks about the greatness and, and power of God. But he also indicates that no one can be just in God's sight. God is the creator of all things. And God is amazing and almighty and miraculous. And God is great. And in Job chapter 9, verse 10 and 11, we read these words. He performs wonders that cannot be fathomed. Miracles that cannot be counted. When he passes me, I cannot see him. When he goes by, I cannot perceive him. Job has this idea that man is so insignificant and God is so great and mighty. And he says in verse 20 and 29 of Job 9, Although I am blameless, I have no concern for myself. I despise my, my own life. Since I am already found guilty, why should I struggle in vain? Job was willing and prepared to accept his condemnation. Even though in his heart he was not sure that he had done anything to deserve this pain and suffering that he was facing. But he knew that God was almighty and that God was just. If we go to verse 33 of Job 9, 
We read, if only there was someone to mediate between us. Someone to bring us together. Someone to remove God's rod from me. So that this terror would frighten me no more. Then I would speak up without fear of him. But as it now stands with me, I can not. If only, if only there was a mediator. If only there was someone who could come to my rescue, my aid, my help. If only there was someone to mediate for me. Friends, there is. His name is Jesus. There is a name above every name. For we don't stand alone. And we're reminded of this in the New Testament in 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there is no, for there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. A mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gives himself as a ransom. For us. And here amongst, amongst the pages of this story, of this book of Job, we see a glimmer of hope. A faint whisper pointing towards our Saviour. If only there was a mediator. If only there was someone who would come. And is in hindsight beautiful? Because we know that our Saviour Jesus will come. My father-in-law reminded me of we, the, the Redeemer is mentioned in Job chapter 19 verse 25. That our Redeemer is coming. Well Job says my Redeemer is coming and I will stand with him. We see a glimpse of hope. Whatever your suffering, whatever your pain, whatever your strife, there's always a glimmer of hope. Let God in. Let him hear your cry. Let him be your comfort and your hope. Let me tell you a story about Dr. Bloomfield. Dr. Bloomfield was well known for his extraordinary success with treating people with arthritis. He had a waiting room full of people one morning, a little old lady, almost bent over in half, shuffles into the waiting room and takes her seat, leaning over on her cane. When her turn comes, she goes into the doctor's office and shuffles and hobbles in and, and the, all the crowd are watching. Amazingly, five minutes later, she emerges standing upright, walking high and tall with a smile upon her face. A woman in the waiting room had seen all that had happened, this little bed over woman going in and this woman coming out upright. She rushes over to the lady and says, It's a miracle, madam, it's a miracle. You walked in half bed over and now you're walking up straight. What did the doctor do? What did he do for you? He just gave me a longer cane. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be seeing that one on Ron's emails. It'll be coming up. Careful. Apparently, people love Ron's emails for the jokes. Oh, yeah. So I hear. So it's full. <laughs> As we turn to chapter 27, we see some final words that Job expresses to his friends. It's Job chapter 27, verse 2 to 6. As surely as God lives, who has denied me justice, the Almighty who has made my life bitter, as long as I have life within me, the breath of God in my nostrils, my lips will not say anything wicked, and my tongue will not utter lies. I will never admit you are, you are in the right till I die. I will not deny my integrity. I will maintain my innocence and never let go of it. My conscience, will, my conscience will not reproach me as long as I live. Job is going to stay faithful and focused despite his suffering. 
His friends had all the idea, all these ideas and all these concerns that he'd done this or done that or hadn't confessed this or hadn't confessed that. Even though he may be bitter in soul, he knows that he will be rescued. He may have felt at times that God had somehow denied him justice. But he still knew that God was somehow just. There's an interesting question for us to ponder. If Almighty God brings or lets trouble come our way, then surely he can also bring us comfort. For he is strong to sink us, but he's also strong to save us. He makes us tremble to kill our pride, but he also gives us hope. Hope that destroys our despair. When Job says that he would not speak wickedness, he meant it. Especially in the context of saying that he would not agree, that his friends were right in their accusations against him. He's in a difficult situation before these so-called friends. God did not hear the cry of the hypocrite, but he had to endure silence from God and a season of pain and suffering. Job could comfort himself in the understanding that he did in fact call on God, not as the hypocrite would. He did not call on God or was angry at God, but he suffered and strived to stay focused on him. For us, the demands and pressures of life can press on in and shrink us down and, and draw our gaze away from God. Don't get lost in the mess and the misery of life and take your gaze and eyes and focus of God. For us who believe it's a spiritual battle as much as a physical one. We all need to lift our eyes to Jesus. For God will be our rescuer. And God will be our deliverer. And God will be our redeemer and hope. God can do a miracle if we let him. Don't stay in that place where you think it's too hard, too difficult. Don't live with doubt and fear. But fix your eyes on Jesus. Let God pick us up today. Let him remind us of his love for us. That he is a God of all creation. That he is a God who acts and cares and lifts and turns things around. For he is not distracted. He is not weary. He is on task and focused. For he makes the impossible possible and the dead alive. Even for those who suffer like Job, God comes through. For we've come to meet with God. We've come to meet with one another. We've come to worship and to praise him. Don't let fear cause us to reduce the size of God and elevate the size and the opinions of people. You know, fear can cause us, cause us to stay quiet, even when we could speak up. I've known fear to stop people doing what they know, what I know, and what they know, and what they believe God has clearly called them to do. But they're stuck in a place of fear and what if, and hurt and doubt. Let's be encouraged by Psalm 123. I lift up my eyes to you. To you 
whose throne is in heaven. As the eyes of the slaves look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of the maid look to the hands of her mistress, so our eyes look to you, to the Lord our God, till he shows us his mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us, for we have endured much contempt. We have endured much ridicule from the proud, much contempt from the arrogant. God, come today and have mercy on us. Hear our prayer for our nation, for our land, for the farmers. Bring the rain. Have your way. For we have endured much. For God knows our story. And God knows our journey. Let us wait for his mercy. Let us hold on. Let us stay focused. In Ephesians 2.10 we read. For we are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. To do good works. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. God has a plan. God has a purpose. For you and for me. For we do not walk alone. Let us lift our eyes. For He, he is our hope and our salvation. You may have endured much. But the day is coming. The day is coming. Hebrews 4, 14 and 15. Let me finish with that. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith that we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Praise God. God bless you. Amen.